Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today is the first official stress testing video and this is kind of like a beta stress testing video. I'm still trying to figure out how to test this and what data I should record and the way to execute the whole video. So let's get started with talking about some of the things that I'm actually using to take the measurements with. One is a thermal imaging camera, which you'll see towards the end of the video with the whole run that we currently see the data of right here with a normal camera on the side in case it catches fire and when we sync them up it's going to look pretty nice. You can also see the current behind it on the power supply which again you'll see towards the end of the video. Now if you don't like the quality of the thermal imaging camera then consider just supporting the channel because that'll enable me to get a better one and it'll enable me to get more testing equipment that allow me to do other things that are pretty cool as well. So uh, I'm taking those two types of measurements which is the thermal and as well as uh, the current sensing here so I'm also using the RC benchmark and this was sponsored by RC benchmark huge shout out to them that enables me to record all this data so what I'm doing is executing a specific run so every time it has different stages so let's just take a look at this so I ran this uh, th I ran three stages and each stage consists of this execution right here and this will make sense right now for four seconds 25% throttle there is no rest between any of these. And then the next four seconds, 50% throttle. The next 20 seconds is 80% throttle. And then after that, another 20 seconds at 100% throttle. And then it drops down to 80% for three seconds. And then it goes back up to 100 for 20 more seconds. So this is just one run. And I ran this three times consecutively in a row with no break. And what you can see is we had 50 amps pulling for 20 seconds here, which was the full throttle. And we had another 50 amps for running for 20 seconds as well, 49 amps, 49.5 amps uh, for 20 seconds here, which is quite amazing for such a small $7.50 uh, $7 ESC. I was really hoping I was actually gonna burn this thing. Uh, that's why I picked up a couple, and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't. And this is not the only test I ran. I ran a trillion before it just to get a nice way to test this stuff. And it, it's, it's just handling very well. It's actually quite amazing how well it's handling. And it's just a BB1 chip, which means it just runs DSHOT 300. That's it. $7.50. I mean, this is a really good backup ESC, I would consider, possibly. I didn't noise test it, but I just wanted to burn this one. And as we can tell, if we look, we take a closer look down here, we see 40 amps for 10 seconds. It was handling 50 amps for 20 seconds plus. So this is a monster of an ESC, which is amazing, actually. And I'll have it linked down below. You can also check those links out. Those greatly support the channel. Uh, you can click them before you make any purchase. It'll help support the channel. Now, let's start making sense of this data. Now, if we take a closer look at the graph here, in gray, what we have is we have the current. The orange is the voltage. And the blue line is the thrust. Now, this is very important data because let's just say after the second stage that it ran and we started the third stage and we started to see very inconsistent data, then we know one of the FETs is going bad. Uh, if we could see in the thrust, we could also see in the current, we could see some weird spikes. Then we know something went bad. However, when we see something consistent, then we know it's still perfect, which is pretty insane. And what we can do with this data, which I'll also have available publicly on my forum, I'll have a special section for ESC stress testing. I do have a couple mods, friends of mine that join the, the, join the forum to be mods there uh, to help people and also help me post some of the things that I have. It's like the ESC, ESC noise testing and the ESC stress testing there. So yeah, it's Tony FPV and Flowey. Huge shout out to them. Thank you guys for helping out. Um, so yeah, the, this information will also all be available for public. Now, what's really cool is we could manipulate this data. For example, uh, we can go to the throttle and we could just choose the full, the 100% the, the throttles here. Um, and as we can tell right here from the first run ever, which is right here, we had a really high thrust. And at the last run, the, the thrust dropped. And you might say it dropped quite significantly. But in reality, it did not. Because when you take a closer look at the numbers, it only dropped 40 grams. So uh, nothing is wrong with that. Just the FETs, you know, just had a little bit less power output because of the heat. And for it to handle this well is, is quite amazing. Uh, that is almost, what is that? That's two minutes that it was on full throttle, other than the 80% throttles and everything. That's two full minutes without break on, um, yeah, it's just, just, just crazy. It's actually way more than two minutes because when you add everything else back into the mix, I don't even know how much time this was. It was quite a lot of time here. 
So yeah, you'll be able to manipulate this data and see uh, how well an ESC is doing. And as you can tell, you can see it was pulling 50 amps uh, for 20 seconds each single, each one of those times. There was no hiccup. And what's really cool, if there was, we'll be able to see in the footage towards the end of the video, uh, which you'll see again towards the end of the video, because it's a really long uh, testing. And I didn't want to put that in the middle right now because it's, it's really long. So, and here we have the watts, so you can see the watts because, you know, if, if you want to watch the voltage with the current, then you can see uh, that the watts also dropped here, the electrical power. Um, so, yeah, you can see that also make sense of it as you please because this will help you, this will enable you or help you make your purchase or avoid a purchase because that's the whole idea here. And no matter if you get this stuff for free or not, this is, you know, the hobby wing I got for free the other time and it blew. I just came back and I said it blew up. There's there's nothing wrong with saying a... a, a something you know went bad unless it's a prototype or pre-production model then if something bad happens then you're supposed to let them know so they modify it and i'm really hoping that companies actually start sending me stuff to help them test because it'll just make a better product overall um but yeah anyways uh, as we can tell it just handled very consistently which is which is really nice to see here i was actually quite surprised because it's just a seven dollar and fifty dollar seven dollar esc basically um i was really hoping to burn it now again back to the reason why i'm making this video is one to show you the current setup and also to get your feedback because your feedback is very important on how you want to see these being tested how long the video should be what i should talk about these types of things and the way that I should execute each stage of thrust uh, of uh, stress testing. As you can tell, this was one stage here and then obviously it just repeats that same stage. You can see that there. Um, but I really wanted to, you know, do a mixture of low and high to, uh, throttle values to see if we have any jitters, any twitches, if it missed a phase because some cheap ESCs miss phases. Well, not cheap ESCs. I don't want to say cheap ESCs. I want to say um, not very well engineered ESCs do tend to miss phases. There's some pretty expensive one that missed phases a couple while ago, uh, well, some time ago. So yeah, we're going to be seeing this stuff. Now, also what I really want to do is figure out a way to incorporate temperature reading with each uh, stage here uh, because I think that's really important. Currently, we're using the thermal imaging camera to do that. And again, if you guys could support the channel so I can get a nicer one, that'd be super cool because it's just going to be used for that. I mean, I don't need it for myself, but it's going to be used for basically all of us in all this testing. Or if you just want to donate one, that'd be super awesome as well. Um, but yeah, any support, guys, can go an absolute long way and help me test this stuff a lot better and get better equipment to do that. Um, so overall, everything is looking pretty good and i just want you guys' feedback and um to be honest this esc seems to be pretty good i mean if another esc can't handle this test then that esc isn't really well designed i don't want to say cheap esc because a cheap esc could handle very well if it's designed really great and that it just did it and now you might be wondering what motors did i use i used the f80s the brand new the latest ones f80 2500 kv with the propeller, uh, the Gemfan 5152s. I mean, this is the most insane thing I thought about using. I could have used six inch props on that motor, but the King Kong props always disintegrate. So I was really scared. I didn't want to basically, you know, have a prop run into my screen or even run into me. So I just decided to use a well-named branded prop that I'm sure that hopefully it will not get this, it will not disintegrate. And it didn't. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And any support can go truly an absolute long way, guys. And I'll leave you guys with the thermal imaging video as well as the long gas testing with the sound of the motors as many of you always requested. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.